Today, let us study the Word of God under the subject King David and Christ Unsung Hong. According to John chapter 5, verse 39, it says that the Bible gives testimony to God, doesn't it? In the Bible, there are numerous testimonies about God who came in the flesh. Today, let's take some time to study about Christ An Sang Hong who came to the earth through the life of David. Let's see Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. As for the child mentioned here, who does he refer to? Let's see Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. As for the child who honored Galilee, who is it referring to? The prophet Isaiah described Jesus Christ who would preach the gospel in Nazareth, Galilee, 700 years before Jesus was born. Though it says a child, a son was born, when we look at the titles he had, he was Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, and Everlasting Father. The Bible testifies that Father came to the earth as a child and as a son. This is a prophecy about Jesus Christ who came to the earth 2,000 years ago and atoned for the sins of all mankind by carrying the cross, isn't it? Here it says, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In verse 7, the prophet Isaiah left a more detailed description about God who came in the flesh. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on whose throne? David's throne. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, came to this earth in the flesh as a child and as a son. When he comes to the earth, he is to reign on David's throne. It means that he will be given the throne of David. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Then, shouldn't this be fulfilled without fail? The prophet Isaiah let us know that Jesus Christ, who came to the earth in the flesh, was God, who upholds the kingdom of the gospel with justice and righteousness by reigning on David's throne. However, this kingdom of the gospel was trampled on by Satan. Through the third and fourth centuries and into the dark ages, one by one, Satan destroyed the order of the law of the new covenant which God had established. The Sabbath disappeared and the Passover was abolished. After they disappeared, what was established in its place? Falsehood began to be established. Sunday worship was observed instead of the Sabbath and Christmas instead of the Passover. Then did this kind of spiritual darkness continue on forever? After the apostles died, there was an age of their disciples and then a few more generations ensued. 
Finally, in the fourth century, all of these truths disappeared. All kinds of teachings that Jesus Christ had never taught began to come into the churches. About this situation, the prophet Daniel wrote, Satan, the devil, will change God's set times and laws. Apostle Paul warned very sternly about this matter in Galatians chapter 1. Do not destroy the law of the truth of life established by God, the King of the universe, who came to this earth in the flesh as a child and as a son. He said, This is the covenant of covenants that can never disappear since God Himself established it to lead us to the eternal kingdom of heaven. For that reason, God even named it the Everlasting Covenant, didn't He? Despite God's warnings, false doctrines began to infiltrate the churches. Let's see Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. God established the most perfect truth in the universe by coming to the earth in the flesh. But the perfect truth was changed and replaced by man's thoughts. Verse 7, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, what will happen to him? Let him be eternally condemned. God warned us that those who pervert the gospel will surely be cursed. Although there were teachings and warnings in the Bible, the truth began to be changed. Finally, the law of the truth, which God established to save mankind, disappeared from the earth. God who sees the end from the beginning foresaw that the truth of life, which He established at His first coming, would be destroyed by Satan. This is why God promised He would appear a second time for those who would be waiting for Him in Hebrews chapter 9. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 8. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God. And who will they serve? David their king, whom I will raise up for them. The prophet Jeremiah wrote this prophecy long after King David had died. It says here, David their king, whom I will raise up. This is not referring to a past event, but a king who will be raised up in the future, right? Then David their king mentioned here refers to a prophetical David, not the physical David, who was the second king of Israel. According to Isaiah chapter 9, whose throne will be given to Jesus? It was already prophesied that the throne of David will be given to God who comes to the earth in the flesh. Then, did Jesus fulfill all the prophecies concerning the throne of David at His first coming? It is certain that Jesus came in the name of David, but as you know, He ascended to heaven without fulfilling all the prophecies about David's throne. About this matter, God said, In the last days, I will raise up King David for you again. Let's continue with Hosea chapter 3, verse 4. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or idol. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God. And whom will they seek? David their king. 
they will come trembling to the Lord and to His blessings in the last days. We need to pay attention to the part. They will seek David their king and come trembling to David in the last days. In Jeremiah chapter 30, it is written, In the last days, they will serve David their king. Here the prophet Hosea also prophesied about the last people of God saying, In the last days, they will serve King David and come trembling to him and to his blessings. The last days here refers to the last age of this world, doesn't it? Then, concerning the people living in this last age, only when they come trembling to David can they become God's children who come to the blessings of God, right? We need to clearly know who David is. Only then can we seek and receive him and come trembling to him. Jesus too gave revelation to Apostle John and mentioned how important it is to know David. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. Then I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who is triumphed, the Root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Only who can open the scroll and interpret God's Word, the truth of life, which has been sealed up? Only the Root of David. It says David, the root of David, and the offspring of David. The Bible uses many different expressions. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. He will open all that has been sealed up and hidden until now. So we must know who the root of David is. It is the same person, both at his first coming and at his second coming. Let's see Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. What did he testify about himself? He said, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. In one part, it says David. And in another part, it says the root of David. It also says the offspring of David and the bright morning star. There are many symbolic expressions that refer to Jesus. It is written in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5, The root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Who is the root of David? It is Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, who was to reign on David's throne? It was Jesus Christ too. When we find out who honored Galilee of the Gentiles, it was a child who came as a son. But the titles that were given to him were Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In the spiritual world, he is God the Father, but Isaiah prophesied that he would come to this earth in the flesh as a son and as a child. Isaiah chapter 9 prophesied that he would come and reign on David's throne and over his kingdom and his people. However, the law of the new covenant, which he established 2,000 years ago, was totally destroyed by the devil. All the false teachings that Satan had sowed have been growing and spreading for more than 1,000 years, even until now. 
If God leaves this alone, all mankind cannot help but die in this age without the truth. So he prophesied in Hebrews chapter 9 that he would come a second time in the flesh to bring salvation. Let's see Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Since Jesus is to come to the earth and be given the throne of David, we need to study the relationship between Jesus and David. According to 2 Samuel chapter 5, when did David become king? It was when he was 30 years old. David's path matches perfectly with that of Jesus Christ. This is why we need to understand the Bible by paying close attention to the prophecies and their fulfillment. Let's see verse 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. As he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was baptized at the age of 30 and proclaimed, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near, didn't he? At that time, how old was Jesus? Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. Then what about David? Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. David was 30 years old when he became king and he reigned. How many years? 40 years. David was anointed at the age of 30. He sat on the throne at the age of 30 and reigned for 40 years. Jesus, too, received baptism, which is spiritual anointment, at the age of 30. Baptism is something that we receive once in our lifetime. However, there is another important prophecy in Luke chapter 12. Let's see verse 49. Here I refers to Jesus. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have what to undergo? I have a baptism to undergo. Luke chapter 3 says, When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. Jesus already received baptism by then. But in chapter 12 he said, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled, but I have a baptism to undergo. He spoke as if he had not been baptized yet, saying a baptism to undergo. This means that he has to be baptized once again, right? For him to undergo baptism, he must come in the flesh. Both at his first coming and his second coming, whose throne will he sit on? He must sit on the throne of David. David sat on his throne at the age of 30 and reigned for 40 years. Jesus received spiritual anointment, that is, baptism at the age of 30, and began to reign over the kingdom of the gospel. Even though he sat on the throne at the age of 30, he was crucified after preaching for three years. He did not fulfill the prophecy of reigning for 40 years as King David. Then when will he fulfill the remaining 37 years? As shown in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, he promised to come again to fulfill the prophecy of David. The second coming Christ must receive baptism at the age of 30 and preach the gospel for 37 years. Only then can he fulfill the prophecy of the throne of David. Since he said, I have a baptism to undergo, baptism here is not referring to his first coming, but which coming? It means that he will receive baptism again at his second coming, doesn't it? How distressed I am until it is completed. In Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10, it says, I make known the end from the beginning. When he saw all things until the end of the world, it was truly hopeless. He was greatly distressed. 
That's why he said, But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is completed. At his first coming, he ascended after reigning on David's throne for only three years. The remaining 37 years must be fulfilled as well. So he promised to appear a second time. Since he has to come with a body that can be baptized, he must come again in the flesh. He has to be baptized at the age of 30, exactly in accordance with the prophecy of David. The important matter is, in what year should he be 30 years old? About this matter, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As for Matthew chapter 24, it contains prophecies to be filled in which days? At the end of the age. Chapter 24, verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? The disciples were curious and asked about two things. When will you come again? What is the sign of the end of the age? Jesus is giving answers to these questions. In verse 32, Jesus told them to learn the lesson from the fig tree. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. We've learned that the fig tree represents a nation of Israel. In AD 70, Israel lost its sovereignty and was completely destroyed. Although they lost their sovereignty, it was restored in 1948 after a long period of 1900 years. The Bible described this event saying, The fig tree which was withered revived. Its twigs got tender and its leaves came out. This parable describes the independence of Israel. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, in other words, when you see the fig tree's twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that who is near? It is near. He is near, right at the door. This is the answer given to the disciples when they asked, When will you come again? It means at that time, you would appear a second time and open the door for the gospel. The year Father An Sang Hong was baptized on the earth was 1948. He is not the prophetical David simply because he was baptized then. His age at the time of his baptism is also important. In order to fulfill the prophecy of David's throne, the first coming Jesus had to be baptized at the age of 30. But the second coming Jesus must continue to fulfill the prophecy of David's throne. So he has to be baptized at the age of 30 and walk the path of the gospel for 37 years. The year 1948 is significant not simply because of the independence of Israel, but from that year, Christ was to be baptized and open the door for the kingdom of the gospel. If you add 37 years to 1948, what year is it? According to the prophecy, he ascended to heaven in February of 1985. The one who accurately fulfilled the prophecy of David's throne is our Heavenly Father, Christ An Sang Hong. Everyone, I'm just showing you everything as it is. So in order for him to be baptized in 1948, when must he be born? He must be born in 1918. So he came exactly in the year 1918. 
There is no prophecy that is false in the Bible. Since it is written, these are the scriptures that testify about me. Shouldn't they all be fulfilled accordingly? Even when he came a second time, he didn't just come. He fulfilled other prophecies in the Bible as well. Let's take a look at Micah chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 1. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. This is a prophecy about the last days. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways. God Himself will teach us in the last days. But from where will He deliver to us His teachings? So that we may walk in His paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. It is written that God's teachings will be fulfilled in Zion and in Jerusalem. Zion is a place where God's feasts are kept. The Sabbath day is a weekly feast. There are annual feasts such as the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Day of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. God will teach us in Zion where these feasts are celebrated. So God's coming a second time on the throne of David and teaching us the Word of God must certainly take place in Zion, where the feasts are celebrated. Since He is coming on the throne of David, He had to be baptized at the age of 30 in 1948, when the fig tree's twigs became tender and its leaves came out. And He had to preach the gospel for 37 years, didn't He? At that time, you will know that it is near, right at the door. The gospel had to be preached again from that point on. Father Ansang Hong came to the earth and taught us in Zion in the last days. Then what will happen when we receive his teachings? Let's find the answer. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 24. My servant David will be king over them, and they will all have one shepherd. The prophet Ezekiel recorded this long after King David had already died. As it is written, My servant David will be king over them. This is a prophecy concerning what is to come in the future. So David mentioned here does not refer to the physical King David, who was the second king of Israel, but to Christ. My servant David will be king over them, and they will all have one shepherd. They will do what? They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. The Passover disappeared and the Sabbath day disappeared. The truth of the new covenant and the feasts disappeared completely. However, those who believe in God will come to follow God's laws and decrees. As David appears, what will happen to all the regulations, decrees, and laws of the new covenant that once disappeared? They will all be restored. That is why it is written that in the last days He will teach us His ways. They are able to keep the laws and decrees because they received His teachings, right? Verse 25. They will live in the land I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children will live there forever. And David my servant will be what? will be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant. Which covenant is the everlasting covenant? The new covenant. God will make the new covenant with His people. I will establish them and increase their numbers, and I will put my sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Where can you find the words, I will be their God and they will be my people? Isn't that from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31, where God spoke about the new covenant? 
Verse 28, Then the nations will know that I, the Lord, make Israel holy, when my sanctuary is among them forever. When David becomes their king, God's people who serve David as their king will be able to keep God's laws and decrees. According to the prophecy of David's throne, the one who came to the earth in 1918, being baptized in 1948 at the age of 30 in Naksam Inchon, and ascended to heaven after preaching the gospel for 37 years, is our Heavenly Father, Christ Ansang Hong. God, the Holy Spirit, completely restored all of God's laws, regulations, and decrees, which had been abolished and trampled on, and proclaimed the law of the New Covenant Passover, leading mankind to the Kingdom of Life once again. He is our Heavenly Father, Christ Ansang Hong. He is our God, who was testified through the Bible and walked the path of the Gospel in this world. I earnestly hope we can build more firmly our house of faith on God, who is our rock, so we can all enter the Kingdom of Heaven that is near at hand with joy as the children of Zion. With this, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.